everybody. We're on commandment number four today about keeping the Sabbath. And let's remember all of these commandments. God said, I'm a God of freedom. Do these things to stay free. We do them because we want to be free. Free to live in him, free from sin, free into hope, free into peace, free into love. Amen. If I drove down Highworth High Street at 36 miles an hour tonight and the police caught me, I'd be in a bit of trouble. If I went out today, found a dealer and imported 100 kilos of heroin into Highworth and then got caught by the police, I'd be in a lot of trouble. You see, for the first one, I'd probably get some points on my licence and maybe do one of those drive awareness courses. The second one, I'd go to prison and probably for a very, very long time. You see, the punishment is equal to the loss. Driving too fast can be dangerous. It was at night, nothing happened, a bit of punishment. A hundred kilos of heroin could cause tens of thousands of people horrendous loss. So the Sabbath day, a day of rest, or as we understand in the, in the New Testament, a lifestyle of rest. I'm not living, striving, battling, grappling, ambitious, but trusting in God. But if we look at um, Exodus 35, we find out there that there was a massive punishment about not taking a day off. You were supposed to be stoned to death if you broke the Sabbath law. Gosh, that puts working on Sundays out there, doesn't it? I'm joking. Again, the level of punishment is equal to the loss. Here God takes this idea, this idea of a testimony about him. You see, Sabbath screams, God is my king, that he is in control, that he has my life, that I don't need to strive and be busy and in haste and try and do everything because it's not on me, it's on God. And God puts a massive punishment there. Not because he's cruel, but because he knows we won't do it. He knows that sin and sin's effects in the world cause us constantly to take everything on ourselves rather than what the gospel is, and we put it onto God. God puts down a crazy punishment because actually in this commandment is crazy freedom. Living in rest. Now for you today, you might go, how the heck am I supposed to do that? You know, look at all the responsibilities I have and this is how much my work requires and da -da 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 -da, and all that stuff. I've got the Holy Spirit. He made everything. He knows everything. He can speak into your life. Come to Jesus. Give him again. Lay it all down before him, give him your life and ask the Holy Spirit to show you how to live, rest and some of it we've got to practice people we've got to maybe find 15 minutes at lunchtime or half an hour in the evening just to go, I'm just going to stop he's the king I can't change the world life's not dependent on me and he can speak radically to you I had a friend of mine very, very clever guy. He was in Mensa and he was actually one of the guys who worked out that we could have Channel 5 way back before all the other stuff happened with Sky and everything else. Um, and he worked out our current uh, signal, uh, the algorithm and the math so that uh, we could have a Channel 5 and 87% of the population could receive that. He um, was in a work team that worked crazy hours and yet he refused to. And he set limits. And he said, this is all I'm working. And at weekends, his friends and co-work colleagues would be in work, and he wasn't. He'd work hard, but he, stopped, he stayed by it. And God honoured him. And what he did was successful, and what he did was fruitful. It was his radical choice within a crazy world to say, hey, this is how I'm going to live. Like Daniel, read him, and what he did about eating food. God can show you in the midst of whatever you're doing how to be radical about rest but realise 
God didn't put crazy punishments in here to be nasty. He put it in here because this is that important, is that vital. God bless you. I've gone 10 seconds over.